I've never designed a garden without having an accurate survey of the space that we're dealing with. Not only the, the areas and the size of the buildings and things like that, but also the various levels within the plot. People find this really quite difficult and they always wonder if it really is necessary, but it is. Because what your eye tells you is square, never is. What your eye tells you is flat, never is. It's so deceptive and you need to have the exact dimensions of everything in order to make your design work. Once you've got that accurate survey, you can bring out your tracing paper and you could do a million variations of what could be achieved. And you can try out what looks best with the pencil on the tracing paper. And then when you've decided what's really going to work, then you can put it on the ground, which is the most expensive and difficult bit. So let's really get it right on paper first. Now, if money isn't too much of a problem, you could, of course, employ a surveyor who will come and survey it for you. And this might be anything from 500 pounds to over a thousand, depending on the size of your plot. But if you don't want to shell out all the dosh, you can do it yourself. One of the simplest ways is to get the Ordnance Survey map of the area. Now, now they are actually making it available for you to download from their site on the internet. And at the moment, there's a free seven day trial. So it's a great time to check it out. So you can put in your postcode, blow up the map so you can see your garden and your plot. Then you can print it off to scale. Now that will come out probably at quite a small scale but you want to print it off at the largest scale it will let you. And then you can take that plan either to a printer and you can get them to enlarge it at a nice working scale, which for a garden like this, I do it one to a hundred. For a tiny wee town garden, I'll do it something like one to 50. Or you could obviously enlarge it by hand, just manually using a scale rule and blowing it up to that size. I downloaded my garden from the OS and I was really excited because I saw nice big blobs of green on there. And those are all the woods that I planted since we came. And it's really nice to see something tangible on a big map like that, showing that you've actually done something to contribute. You might have a conveyancing plan when you bought the property, which will be at a tiny scale, something like one to 2,500 or something, which you could enlarge. Or you could actually phone up your local map shop that does Ordnance Survey and ask them to send you a site-centred map of your property at 1 to a 200 scale, which is also very useful. So that's three methods of getting the outline of your property. Whichever way you choose, you want the basic footprint of the buildings, the driveways, the trees, the paving, everything you want to keep you want down marked in the accurate position on that survey. Now the OS map won't give you the position of all the different trees. It won't give you exact position of the finer detail. So from that plan, when you've blown up the Ordnance Survey map, say to one to a hundred, you then need to plot the other items yourself. Now you shouldn't let this phase you because it's really not that difficult. So if I've got a long line of a building and then next to the building, I've got a series of trees. What I can do is lay out one long tape measure along the building. So I've got the actual distance running along. And then with another tape measure perpendicular to the long one, I can take offset. So if I go say 10 meters along the big tape on the ground, there's a tree, I'll pull it out from the 10 meter and the tree might be three meters away. So that offset is three meters and I can mark it on the plan. The next tree might be another 10 meters along so I can mark that offset. So you can then take several offsets of what you need to, maybe a tree, maybe some steps, maybe a wellhead or anything like that from that main tape measure on the ground. So that way is a very easy way to get many things. If you've got a big lawn and you've got a random tree in the middle of the lawn and you want to find out the exact position of that tree, another option is triangulation. Again, you'll measure the length of the building nearest it or a long set hedge line or something like that. You'll measure that length. At one end of the hedge, I put another tape and I take it to the tree. 
so that's the second line of the triangle. And then with my third measurement is from the far corner of the hedge or the building, I take the measurement to the tree. So I've got, in effect, a triangle and I know all three dimensions. So using compass and the scale rule, I can plot the exact position of that tree. So it's not too difficult. It just takes a bit of time and meticulous working through to plot everything on. If you're going to remove lots of things, then obviously you don't perhaps need to know their position. So only keep those things, plot them down, that you know that you want to keep. Then you come to the position of levels. Now that's all fairly straightforward for the position of things on the ground. The other thing that people are really, really reluctant to do is tackle the level issue. How much is that ground sloping? And levels are a brilliant way to really make a garden more interesting. And if you've got a very windy site, you can sink terraces and they make them much more sheltered. If you've got fabulous views, you can build up platforms so you've got wonderful panoramic views of them and really, really make them into something. It does give you a lot more scope if you know the level of the ground. And that actually now with modern techniques is also fairly straightforward. Um, you can get, be sophisticated and get a theodolite, but much easier is a little laser level that you can get from someone like Bosch. And this costs something like £24 or so. And you then fix this on top of a tripod or something, maybe a chair at a set height. Make sure the actual laser level is sitting level. Then you have a staff, a stick at the top of your slope. And from the laser, you pit it so that you turn it and so the bubble, the red laser dot, hits the staff at the top of your slope and you mark it on the staff. And then you move your level down to the bottom of the slope and then you move your laser level so that the dot of the red dot on that staff hits it and then you mark the staff. And then by measuring the difference between the top level and the bottom level, you know the height difference of the slope that you've just, just measured. Now these laser levels are really designed to be used in the house. So in very bright sunlight, you won't get a very strong dot. So you need to choose the duller days or at dusk, and then it really will stand out. Um, or choose a very shady day. But it is a fabulous little tool that does enable you to get really accurate levels. Now we live in a very flat area and when we put the ha-ha in at the back I really didn't think there was much of a level change there but actually we've got over a meter difference and by knowing that we had that level difference and forming the feature of the ha-ha we have a lovely relatively flat platform above the field then we've got the change in level retained by the telegraph poles and then we've got the undulating feel. So we've managed to create there that invisible fence, that boundary, that ha-ha. And that whole bit, that whole lawn feels great, I think, because it does feel like you're on top of the surrounding space. I cannot stress the importance of getting a good survey. I could never do a good design without a good survey. So it really is worth spending a bit of time on. Now, once we've got the survey, then we come to the exciting bit. The next video that we're going to do is how you actually then divide your garden into different spaces using the basic survey. So you can create a space that you really like, that works for you and works for your site.